Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Right to the Top. I'm Adam. Today in this video, we're going to continue with our little mini course on test preparation and the first steps. So if you watch the other videos, you've already chosen the test you're going to take, IELTS or TOEFL, or another test. If you've looked into other tests as well. You've chosen the books you're going to use. You're ready to start. Where should you start? Well, I always say start with the writing section. And in this video, I want to convince you to do that. Okay, Because at the end of the day, if you can write well, then you can read well, you can probably listen better, and you can speak better as well. Okay, And I'm going to show you exactly why. Another reason, and the main reason I want you to start with the writing section, is because the writing skills are the hardest to improve on and the hardest to develop. And they take the most time to improve. And because they take the most time to improve, you need to start on them right away. I know that most people, they go right for the listening, right for the reading, because they think they can score higher, and it's okay. But it's the writing section that is going to bring down your overall score. And if you need to have a minimum score in each section, it's the writing that's going to be causing you problems. So today we're going to look at some numbers. I'm going to give you some statistics and uh, ideas as to why you need to work on writing, why writing is so difficult for so many people, and I'm going to talk about some common myths Myths are stories that people have heard about the writing section that are just simply not true. And you need to get rid of them, get them out of your head, lose your fear, and get going. So let's start with numbers. This page, it might not be clear, but don't worry too much about it. OK, so this page I took from the IELTS website. This is the IELTS uh, numbers, basically. It's results from uh, 2017. And it's looking at a whole bunch of countries. I just took a little sample here. And I just took from the top. And uh, these are the countries that are at the top. It's alphabetical order. If you look carefully, this shows you all the average scores for each, four, each of the four sections plus a total score. Now, you'll notice here in the red box that the writing section for every single one of these countries, the writing section scores the lowest. Okay, And it's not just for these countries. It's for most countries. In fact, I would say probably 95% of t uh, IELTS and TOEFL test takers score lowest on the writing section. So you need to start working on that skill right now if, you wanna, if it's important. Now, a little bit of a side note. If you're applying to a college that needs an overall band six to get, into, uh, to get accepted, then don't worry about the writing. Get a 7.5, 7.5 listening and reading. Get a 6 in writing, and your overall will be more than 6. Or even get a 7, 7, and 5.5, you're still OK. These videos are intended for those of you who need 6.5, 7, 7.5. And if you need a minimum score in the writing, that's what, uh, that's what you come here for. That's what I'm going to help you with, OK? Now, another thing. Again, I'm looking at IELTS. You can find similar information for TOEFL. These are some of the top business schools in the world, OK? And these are the scores that they need, the minimum scores you need to get on the IELTS to be accepted into these programs. 7, 7.5, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7 1, 6.5. Basi basically, what this means is that you need a high score. So even if you're getting 8, 8 listening and, write it, and reading, you still need to get at least a 7 in the, in the writing section, sorry or a speaking section, because speaking is also very hard for people, and reading is also very hard for, very, so for some people. Now, if you just need an overall score and that's it, you could probably get away with a 6.5 in writing, even a 6 if you get like a 9 in reading, that's fine. But I'm going to look at Rodman School of Management. This is the U of T, University of Toronto University uh, program in Toronto, sorry, I should say. So the Rodman School of Management they want you to get a IELTS or TOEFL. They'll accept both. And that's another thing you have to understand. Most schools will take both of them now. But look at the TOEFL. They need an overall score of 110 here, I think, 100. But they need a minimum score of 22 in speaking and writing, the active skills. So it doesn't matter if you get a 9 in your a nine, or if you get a 30 in uh, reading and you get a 30 in listening. If you get an 18 or 19 in writing, you're not getting into this program. You need a minimum score. Now, IELTS doesn't give a detailed breakdown. But if you're applying to Rodman School of Management, call the school or email the school 
and ask them if they just care about the overall or if they have a minimum. Sometimes they just forget to list it. Sometimes they just don't list it. Make sure you know the scores you need, okay? Because it's very important. And make sure that there's not a minimum for writing because that's one you're gonna have a hard time with. Now, aside from all that, let's say you pass your IELTS, let's say you get your TOEFL score that you need to get into the program. Keep in mind, you're still gonna need to know how to write well because look, part of your application includes two essays. You still have to write. You're still gonna have to give them all kinds of other information, application essays, personal statements. Uh, maybe they want a resume, maybe they want a cover letter. When you graduate from university, you're gonna be applying for jobs. You're gonna need to write a resume, a cover letter. You, you're gonna be writing for the rest of your life. Start improving it today, okay? Last thing, immigration. For those of you who are taking the IELTS general test because you wanna to go to Australia, Canada, UK, et cetera, in uh, Australia, for example, they have a point system. And the more points you get, you can apply for a PR, a permanent residency, right? Now, to get points for your English, you need to get at least a seven in IELTS, and you'll get 10 points. You'll need at least seven in each of the four components. So again, if you get nine in listening, you get nine in reading, you get nine in speaking, but you get a six in writing, then you're not getting your 10 points for your, towards your PR. And a lot of people think, well, if, if somebody's getting eight, nine, nine in speaking and reading, they're probably getting nine in writing too. No, that does not work that way. Writing is its own language. It's a very precise use of English, and it's very difficult, and it has to be very clear. Remember, there's no listener. There's only the reader. There, you are not there to explain anything. It's only the reader and the words on the paper or the screen. So writing is very difficult. <clears throat> And if you think that native speakers, all native speakers can go and get a nine on the writing section, you're very wrong. A lot of native speakers don't know how to write well. Now, for the TOEFL, you, they need a 27 for writing section. So it doesn't matter if you need 24 all the way through for the other sections, they want a minimum writing score. So again, very difficult. Make sure that the writing, and the writing is the one that's gonna hurt you the most, make sure you practice it now. If you wanna get 20 points towards your PR in Australia, you need to get eight in the IELTS. Eight, 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 eight. And getting an eight in the writing section, very difficult. Now, why is writing so hard? Well, again, it's the same for the speaking. You have active skills and you have passive skills. Passive means that the English is coming into you and you're just taking all the words and you're working with what you've already understood before, what you've learned, and you're processing it and turning it into your native language and understanding it. You're not really doing anything, you're absorbing. Active skills means that you have to produce the language. You have to think of the word. You have to put the words together in sentences. You have to put sentences together in such a way that a listener or a reader gets your message. This is much more difficult. Now in terms of the test, the main problem is that the active skills need feedback. You can't check yourself so easily because there's nothing there to point out. You think you said it correctly. You think you wrote it correctly. Until someone shows you the mistakes, you might not realize your errors and you'll make the same mistakes again and again. The, pa the listening and reading, there's an answer key. If you get a bunch of uh, practice tests, they come with an answer key, you just check. Yes, no, yes, no. The ones you got wrong, you can go back to the text, you can go back to the listening and check again and find out why the correct answer is correct. Speaking and writing, you need feedback. And I'm gonna, the next course I'm gonna make is exactly about that, how to self-assess your writing, how to look for what they're scoring, okay? Now, another very important thing I want you to remember, writing and reading are very, very much related. The reason I keep telling people, read, 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 read every day, is because if you know how to read, then you know how to write better. If you know how to write well, you know how to read better. It's the same principles, right? The writer, the thing you're reading, the writer wrote it in such a way to make it clear to you. You need to do the same thing the other way, right? So make sure you read a lot. The more you read, the more you'll have vocab, the more you'll have grammar, the more you'll have syntax, etc. Now, finally, let's look at some common myths about the writing section. And I've heard this from a lot of different people. The graders will punish you for your ideas. For example, if you live in a country 
where the government is a little bit overbearing, it controls people too much, and it doesn't like certain ideas, and you think that if you write anything that is different from what your government thinks, the graders will punish you. No, that is not the case. First of all, the graders really don't care what you think. I, it's, I know it doesn't sound nice, but they don't. All they care about is the English on the paper. Did you express your idea well? Did you support it, your idea as well? Did you give good examples, good grammar, good vocab, etc.? Another thing, the graders are hired by British Council or they're hired by ETS, the owners of IELTS and TOEFL, okay? So they are very well trained and they are supervised. For the first few months, they're, all, their, all their samples are looked at. If they put anything political, if they punish you for political ideas, they will lose their jobs. They're not gonna do that. And then after a few months, they're checked periodically. Also, there are two graders. You have to make two people angry, which is very unlikely. And if you appeal, if you think that you should have gotten a higher score, they send it to a third grader in the UK, for example, for IELTS. And if that person realizes that you actually wrote very well, then they're gonna start looking at the graders who marked you originally. They risk their jobs. They're not going to do that. They don't care what you think. They care about your English only. So write whatever you wanna write. But, just a side note, have some common sense. Don't be racist. Don't be sexist. Don't be ageist. Don't be offensive. Political ideas are fine if you want to get to that. Generally, they're not going to give you questions that involve too much politics. But again, anything else, anything that's offensive to a human being, they can find ways to punish you if they want to. If you write a lot, this is the next myth. If you write a lot, some people think you will gain points. So they write a lot, a lot, a lot, thinking it's impressing the graders or you will lose points for writing too much. Both are not true. For the IELTS, your minimum is 250. If you write less than 250, you definitely lose points. If you write 400, you might lose points, but not because of a lot of writing. You lose points because you probably started to go off topic. You don't need 400 words to answer the question they gave you. Plus, the more you write, the more chances you, ha you give yourself to make grammar mistakes, vocab mistakes, logic mistakes. Get, answer the question as quickly as you can, but for IELTS, try not to go above 350. Again, remember, the graders are marking a lot of papers. They get a little bit bored. If you give them too much without actually saying anything, they'll take off points for your task completion. TOEFL, now the TOEFL is a little bit different. Because it's a, one of the graders is a computer program, it does help a little bit to write more aim for about 400 words. Now, if you get to like 600 words, you've gone way too far. You're probably making a lot of mistakes along the way. That's fine. You're not gonna lose points for writing too much. You're gonna lose points for other things that uh, you risk by writing too much. Next, big words lead to a higher score. If you've somehow managed to word, use the word discombobulate in your essay, that's not gonna help you unless it is very, very fitting for the context. Okay? You don't need big words. You can use big words, but make sure that they're correct, they're used correct, they're spelled correct, they're in the right form. Make sure they're very appropriate to the surroundings. And make sure you don't only have one or two big words and then the rest of the essay is simple words. Make sure that the graders don't realize you memorize this word and you're just sticking it in there just to impress them. They're not going to be impressed. Better to use everyday words in non-everyday uh, meanings. For example, the word air, A-I-R, <sighs> air, you breathe in and out. If you can use that as a verb to mean express, that's a much better use of vocabulary than discombobulate, which just basically means to confuse people. <clears throat> Next, it's impossible to get a nine in IELTS or a 30 in TOEFL on the writing section. Not impossible. Very, very, very difficult. You basically have to be almost no errors. You may have one or two mistakes in grammar or spelling, or whatever, but these are just like accidental. Very difficult, very rare, not impossible. But nobody needs a nine. You don't need a nine. Maybe you need an eight if you're going to journalism school or if you're going to law school or in some top school. You don't need a nine. Don't, don't worry about a nine, but again, not impossible. 
you shouldn't use phrasal verbs or idioms. I hear this a lot. People think that phrasal verbs and idioms are too informal and you shouldn't use them in a formal essay. Let me show you something. This is the public rubric for the TOEFL scoring. This is what they're telling you they're looking for in their scoring. They want to see idiom, uh, idiomaticity and they want to see that uh, you have good use of idiomatic language. They want you to use idioms. So not only can you use idioms, you should use idioms and phrasal verbs, just use them correctly. A lot of people think that task one is worth less, so don't worry about it too much, don't practice it. Task one is one third, 30% of your score. It, if you have a very low or very bad task one score, it'll bring down your overall score. So yes, it is very important and do practice it. Maybe put more emphasis on the essay but don't neglect task one. And I've seen a lot of people do that as well. So don't do that, okay? So there you go, some numbers, some myths debunked. Uh, that's a good word for you too. I'll write it down in the description box. Again, if you have any questions about this, please ask me in the YouTube comment section. Uh, you can always, uh, members can get a little bit extra information in the members area. And again, do your research. But the most important thing, read every day and start writing every day. In the next video, I'll talk about vocab as the next step, and you'll see how important that is, okay? So again, don't forget, Mondays, I'm going to continue courses. Wednesdays, little practicums, more focused uh, lessons. And uh, if you like the video, give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.